Hi guys, Alberto here. You're watching the Bedroom Rocker YouTube channel and today is going to be a board build video. So I'm putting together a new pedal board and I'm going to take you to my thought process from selecting the type of board, from picking the pedals and also ordering, connecting and powering the pedals. Then also I'm going to show you some sound samples. So if you're building your first pedal board or if you're just into pedal boards in general, grab a drink, sit tight and let's go. <laughs> So the main idea of the pedal board is to have a flat surface to put your pedals and have them laid out in front of you to facilitate switching and also to facilitate transportation. There are many ways that you can achieve this. If you go to your local construction shop, you can just grab a plate of wood or if you go to IKEA, there are plenty of items that can be easily modified into a pedal board. But nowadays, most people are using these types of aluminum frame. Uh, these are also commonly referred to as pedal train style pedal boards and these are actually my favorite because aluminum is very sturdy and lightweight so this makes for great transportable and compact pedal boards and having the rails with empty spaces in between is also ideal for cable management and for placing your power supply underneath the board. These types of board also comes in many different sizes depending on how many pedals you want to accommodate. I usually recommend you going one size bigger than your current needs. So if you currently own four pedals, get a board that can fit five or maybe six pedals because pedals have the tendency to multiply themselves quite quickly. The model I have here is the Harley Benton Spaceship 50C. This is the smallest board on the Harley Benton line and it can fit about five to six pedals maybe. I've been using this for three years, I never had any issue. It retails for about 35 euros here in Germany, so it's really affordable. And it comes also with a padded gig bag, so it's awesome for transportation. I take this on the, on the metro and it's just great, lightweight and a simple, affordable solution. But Palmer also does very similar pedal boards and of course pedal train is the industry standard for this type of aluminum frame pedal boards. Now let's talk about the pedals or the effects themselves and this is of course highly dependent on your playstyle and what you want to achieve but for me I usually like to have at least two different flavors of gain in my board and this could be for example a booster, an overdrive, a distortion or a fuzz. Then I like to have at least one modulation pedal which could be a phaser, a flanger, a tremolo or a chorus and then at least one time-based effect, which could be a delay or a reverb. It's also a pretty good idea to have one pedal tuner in the board so that you can mute your guitar sound and tune silently. And finally, if you have some space left, I usually like to add some kind of crazy effect, something that I'm gonna use maybe once or twice during the set list, but that's really gonna make the song stand out. This is the pedal combination that I want to have in the board. So I'm starting with the Harley Benton CPT20 tuner. This is just a small and very affordable tuner that gets the job done. Then I have here one of my favorite drive combinations, which is to have the Ibanez Tube Screamer Mini and the Full Tone OCD version 2. I usually like to have a light gain mid pushed overdrive like the tube screamer and then having a, a bit more gain and a flat response overdrive after it. So in this case I'm gonna use the OCD as my main overdrive. I really like how it fattens up the guitar sound and also has a very versatile range of gain. And the tube screamer I'm gonna use it to sort of push my amp into hairy territory and also then to push the OCD over the edge for the lead tones. So if I use these two together, I can get loads of sustain and it's a great lead tones for my solos. Then I have here the MXR Phase 95. This gives me great Phase 45 and Phase 90 sounds. I really like it for the sort of funky rhythm guitar thing, but also for the more rocky Van halen -y stuff. Then I have here the TC Electronic Sub and Up Octave. And this is sort of the crazy pedal in the pedal board and you can do octave stuff, but you can also add a flanged octave and do some organ church stuff. So I'm not completely sure how I'm gonna use it, but I know I can get some pretty interesting sounds out of it. And finally, I have the TC Electronic 
uh, flashback to mini delay and this just packs a bunch of different delay sounds in a tiny box so it's a very versatile and cool delay pedal to have in a small pedal board the amplifier that i'm gonna use today is the victory v40 this is one of my favorite amplifiers to play with pedals and it's got also a great inbuilt digital reverb that i'm gonna use as an additional effect the next thing to discuss is the order of the pedals in the board and the first rule is that there are no rules there's no right or wrong as long as it sounds good then it is good but there are some guidelines to help you get started and this generally includes that fuzz and what pedals should go first then you usually want to have your gain stages so boosters overdrives distortions then you're going to have modulation pedals and finally you're going to have your time-based pedals like delays and reverbs another common question is whether to place time-based effects like delays and reverbs in the effects loop of the amp and this depends highly on how you set your amp in my case i like to have the amp set up very clean and i get the gain mostly from my overdrive pedals and in this case it is completely fine just to have your delays and reverbs going into the front end of your amp however if you want to use the gain from your amplifier so if you want to set your amplifier to sound dirty you can usually get more clarity by placing delays and reverbs in the effects loop of the amp using the so-called four cable method the next thing I want to cover is how to power your pedals properly and for this I'm gonna follow the VCPI script which stands for voltage, current, polarity and isolation. For voltage you should check the voltage required for each one of your pedals individually and then make sure your power supply can provide exactly that voltage. If you provide more voltage than that you may end up burning your pedals. Many pedals require 9 volt power supply but there are also many exceptions, especially larger digital multi-effect units will require more than that. So just make sure to double check. The next item is current and ideally you should be able to check the current required for each one of your pedals, then sum them up and make sure your power supply can provide more current than your pedals require. This will make sure they all have enough juice to do their job without getting power hungry. The next item is polarity and this is usually not a concern because 99% of the pedals use a center negative pin. However, there are also exceptions and some uh, very common ones are vintage germanium transistor pedals like fuzz faces or treble boosters. So make sure to double check that and if you have a center positive pedal, you will typically need a polarity inverter cable or you can just use regular 9 volt batteries with them because they take very little current consumption anyway. Finally, we have isolation. If you use a regular daisy chain like this one, you are connecting all your pedals in series and you may have noise leaking from one pedal to the other. And this is especially concerning if you are mixing analog and digital pedals like I am doing here. So for these cases, I highly recommend you to get an isolated power supply. This will prevent this from happening and you make sure your setup runs very quietly and smoothly. The power supply I'm using here is the Harley Benton Power Plant ISO 2 Pro. This is a great and affordable power supply. It can provide up to 2000 milliamps of current. It has eight isolated outputs. Six of them are fixed to nine volts and two of them can be switched between 9, 12 and 18 volt. So this is a very affordable and a very flexible power supply for small to medium sized boards. And they also do a couple of different sizes depending on your pedal board needs. Of course, you're going to need some DC and patch cables to connect your pedals. The Harley Benton power supply comes with many DC cables, but they're all quite long and all of the same length which makes cable management a bit of an issue. I have used some cheap office cable management stuff to help tie the cables and make the pedal board looks a bit neater, but I have also used EBS flat DC cables and I also use EBS flat patch cables. These are really high quality cables. I haven't seen a single one of them fail yet. 
and they are also really lifesavers when it comes to pedal board real estate and they are also still quite affordable considering their quality and durability. One of the issues of having all your pedals connected in series is that even if they are true bypass or if they have inbuilt buffers, they may end up modifying your raw guitar signal one way or the other. To avoid that, some players like to use a switcher or a looper switcher and what this does is basically to place all your pedals in effect loops and you can use the switch to activate or deactivate these loops. And this way you can remove your pedals from your raw guitar signal so when the loops are deactivated your raw guitar signal remains intact and you can always leave your pedals on and just activate them by switching the loops on and off. Now let's hear some sound samples. I put together a small track to show you as many different sounds as possible. I'm plugging the guitars straight into the pedal board, straight into the input of the Victory V40 amplifier, and then I'm gonna use the two notes wall of sound for cabinet simulation. So let's check it out. So let me know what you think about the sounds and about the pedal board itself. Make sure to write down in the comment section below. Also, if you have something that you would have done differently or if you have some special pedal combination that you really like, please do let me know. Overall, I'm really happy with the setup, but of course, I'm also very biased because some of these effects are in my favorite list and some of them I have been using for a long time, so I really know their strengths and weakness. Regarding the pedal board setup itself, I think this is an amazing setup for me. It gives me enough uh, flexibility in terms of different sounds and colors and also it's still lightweight and compact enough to carry to the gigs and to band rehearsals. It is also great in terms that the cables are not completely fixed and it is very easy to swap pedals around and in fact every two weeks or so I like to swap one or two pedals and just explore different sounds and different textures. So that's it for today, I really hope the video was helpful and fun to watch, if that's the case make sure to leave it a thumbs up and if you want to see more content like this make sure to hit the subscribe button. If you like what I'm doing here and you want to support the channel, also make sure to check the description box below. There you'll find the link to my Patreon page 
and also my affiliate links to all of the gear that I have used in this video. If you use them to buy anything, I earn a small commission and this really helps me to get more products for making reviews and tutorials like this one at no additional cost for you. So keep on rocking and cheers!